everyone, it's your Edge again, and today we're going to be solving problem number seven. So here we have the problem. So by looking at this problem, we know that what we need to find is the nth prime number. So let's get started. So here I have Eclipse, and basically we're going to do this in three steps. First, figure out how to check if a number is prime. That's step one. Step number two. Figure out how to find the next prime, uh, the clo the next prime number after a number. That's step two. And step three is to create an infinite series of prime numbers. So let's get started with the first part, which is f uh, creating a method that tells us if a number is prime or not. So def is prime, and we are going to have a number of type int, and then what we're going to return is going to be a boolean. So, we know that a prime number is a number for which its only f factors are 1 and itself. So basically, we want the numbers between 1 and itself to not contain any factors of our number. So basically, we want this not to happen, so we can put an exclamation mark. And then basically, in we want to check in that range from 2 the number after 1, 2, num minus 1. So this is our range. And now we want to find a number, so, uh, we want to see if there's a number such that our, uh, the number is a, fac a factor of num. So we're going to do exist. And what exist does is, if uh, it's going to look through your range or list or whatever, and then what it's going to do is, you give it a function, and if that function returns true, the method will return true, because there exists a number for which the function returns true. El otherwise, if it doesn't find a method that returns true, it'll return false. So basically, what we, our function is, our condition, what it's going to be is that uh, our num it, the number we're looking at is a factor of num. So to find that, we want the uh, the we want the remainder when we uh, do the division of num and the number we're looking at to be zero. That means it is a factor of num. So we want exists num, and to get the remainder, we do modulo, and we can do underscore, which is the number we're looking at, and we want this to equal to zero. So that's our is prime method. But there's one uh, slight improvement we can make. See how we're looking at all the numbers from 2 to num minus 1? It turns out we only need to look at this to the square root of the number. And the reason we uh, can, uh, and the, the way I'll explain why this is true is let's take a number, let's say 12, and let's find all the factors. You'll find that factors come in pairs, pairs of two numbers. So we're going to, uh, if we have 12, the pairs would be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and uh, these pairs of numbers, the first number multiplied by second number equals to the number they're factor of. So you also notice that in these pairs, one number is always less than the square root, and one number is always greater than. And we know that this is true because always uh, the only case in which they're go both going to be equal to the square root is going to be when they both, uh, when these two numbers are going to be the, the exact square root of the number. So these two numbers are the square root of the number, and they're also equal. So their multiplication is going to be the, uh, the number they're a factor of, and they're both equal since they're the square root of the number. And if one of the number is less than the square root, the other number is going to have to be greater so that it balances out. So all we actually have to do is we only need to go from 2 to math.square root of our number, and we'll have to do 2 int round it and the reason why we don't need to look at all of it and uh, and still check for those pairs is because we know the important fact is one is less than square root, one is greater than square root and you'll never find pairs in which both are greater than the square root or both are less than the square root 
So therefore, you know that it, it's not possible that there could be a number greater than the square root, and you won't find its matching pair in the less than. So you only need to look in the less than, uh, less than square root. So now we're going to go on to the second part, which is going to be f uh, creating a method that checks if a number, uh, which number is the next uh, prime number after the number you give it. So def next prime from our number of type int. And what this is going to equal to is we're going to use an iterator because we want to look at all the numbers after num and look for the first prime number. So to start off, I'm going to create an iterator of all the numbers after num. It's going to be infinite. Iterator dot. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a method called from. And fr uh, from creates an infinite it, uh, it infinite iterator, starting with the number you specify and incrementing by one. So our start is going to be num plus one, all the numbers greater than one. And what we want to do is we want to find a number that is prime. So we don't need to give, uh, we don't need to do in parentheses underscore and give it a parameter because we only have one method and we're only giving it one parameter so we can just give the method. And find returns an option because it's not sure if it'll find a number, but we can just use dot get because we will always know that there's a number greater, uh, there's a prime number greater than the number you're looking at because there are infinite prime numbers. And the reason we know that is through Euclid's proof. So uh, thanks to that, we can use get without having to worry about getting exceptions. So now we've completed our second part, and we can go on to the third and final part, which is creating a series of prime numbers. So val primes, so this is going to be our series of prime numbers, and again, we're going to use iterator. So the reason we've been using iterators so far and not streams is with iterators, it doesn't store all the numbers. And since we don't care about all the previous numbers, we don't uh, numbers don't have to depend or we don't have to look at multiple numbers. We, uh, we only need to look at the number that we're uh, that, uh, the current number that we're looking at in our iterator, we, we don't need to use streams. Streams would store everything uh, before the number you're looking at, but with iterators, it doesn't. So we're going to use iterators again, since we don't care about storing all the prime numbers. We're only going to uh, iterate through all the prime numbers. Iterator dot and what we're going to use is we're not going to use from or a method we've seen before. We're going to use a new method called iterate. And iterate is quite similar to from in the way that it has a starting value. So, uh, so uh, our starting value is uh, going to be 2, the first prime number. And the difference between iterate and from is that in from, the next number is always the current number plus 1. But with iterate, the next number is defined. Uh, the next number is going to be uh, defined by the function you pass it. So the function is going to take a parameter, which is uh, the current value, uh, with, uh, the current value you're looking at, which in our uh, in our starting case is going to be two, and what it returns is going to be the next value. So our, uh, the next prime number is going to be next prime from the number we're looking at. And again, we don't need to do parentheses underscore because it only takes one parameter and we're only using it once. And we're, we only have one method. So now uh, we've uh, created our iterate. And if we think of it, we could also uh, do from using an iterate iterate because with, we could pass uh, the uh, starting value and our next value would be uh, underscore plus one. So that's how you would uh, create a f uh, infinite uh, iterator starting with a certain value, incrementing by one, but not using with from using iterate. So that's just a little insight. So now that we have our prime numbers, all that's left is to find the 10,000 and first prime number. But it's not so easy because 
You see, with iterators, you don't. Ha uh, there's no way to get the nth number. You only have a way of getting next numbers, and then uh, just uh, just keep on getting next numbers. You can skip all the way to nth number. So the way we're gonna get the nth number is we're gonna just take all ten thousand numbers, so everything before the number we want, and just take it and throw it in the trash by using drop and then get the next value in our iterator, which is going to be the 10,001st number. So we're going to print ln our answer, and our answer is going to be primes dot drop. So we're going to drop, so take all the numbers and throw them in the trash, and we uh, the number, uh, the amount of numbers we want to take, uh, take and drop into the trash is 10,000. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the next value. So now we, uh, we're we finished with Euler 7. And now to run, I'm going to do a new thing. So if you go, uh, in Eclipse, if you go to the outline, you'll see your application, which is an object. And uh, in our case, it's gonna, our object is Euler 7, which extends app. So it's important that it extends app or has a def main or something like that. And then what you can do is you can just run that object. So this is use. Uh, this might be useful if you have a bunch of objects which all can be run. Uh, and then you can just select which one you want to run. And now I can just run a Scala application. So now we. Uh, I just run it, and I got my answer one zero four seven four three. So that's our answer, and we did a bunch of interesting things in this vi uh, while solving Euler 7. So first of all, we, uh, we started by creating a simple isPrime method, but we used, uh, we, we used some smartness to create an even better algorithm. And now let's look at how much better this algorithm actually is. So I just did the, uh, I just finished up the Coursera uh, algorithms course. And now these days I'm trying to apply the knowledge I used into what I do. So here I'm going to apply the, my knowledge. So our original algorithm would have taken order n time. And this is taking order of square root of n time. So this it might not seem such a big difference, but think, we're going to uh, get the 10,000th prime number. So think, if we uh, were doing 10,000, if our uh, n is 10,000, uh, order of n would uh, mean that we have 10,000 time, but square root of n would be 100 times. So that's a big difference, and with even higher numbers, it would be an even bigger difference. So that is prime, so that was really interesting. Then I created a really interesting way to figure out the next prime from a number using from on the iterator method and find. And then finally, we learned about a new method in iterator called iterate in uh, to uh, create a series of primes, an infinite series to be exact. And then finally, we use this series of primes to get our answer using drop. So take all the numbers, throw them in the trash, and get the next value. So this problem, this problem was really interesting to solve, and we'll be seeing even more interesting things in my next video, in which we'll solve Euler 8. See you there. Bye.